Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are back on the Irish mandolin. to learn a tune called the Three Sea Captains, a very well-known piece of music if you're in the world of Irish dancing, where it is one of the most common set dances. And if you've ever been fortunate or unfortunate enough to be at the World Dancing Championships or something like that, you will have heard this one million times, possibly in the same day. The lovely story goes that the Three Sea Captains is named for the British, Russian and French Sea Captains, the last wooden ship battle of all time when they fought the Egyptians in the 1800s. But unfortunately for the story, this tune was collected in the late 1700s. It featured in a book called McGowan's Repository of Scots and Irish Airs, and before that in an even more flamboyant titled book, John Lee's Collection of Country Dances for the present year, 1791. Nevertheless, it's a lovely tune. It's weird. It has eight bars repeated in the first half, and the second half has 20 bars. It's 20. The setting of the tune, although it's written as a jig, is quite unusual. The first part has 16 bars, and the second part has 20 bars repeated. So it's quite a long piece of music. Before we even get started, if I could ask a favor, please hit the subscribe button and the notify button. And if you like this content, drop a comment. It really does help the god-awful YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people. Here's the version we're aiming for. Chords, flamboyancy, and a very long, complicated, triplety, runny thingamabob. I'm not sure it has a name. This is a lovely simple tune, but we are going to ornate the living daylights out of it. Here's the version we're aiming for, and we'll break down some of this afterwards. For the simplified basic melody of the tune, head on over to Patreon that you have PDFs and scrolling notation all available there. 
Let's look at the chords. It's in the key of G, and mostly it's G, C, and D chords. There is an odd E minor and an A minor, and even a A7, depending on what you're into yourself. So here's a very simple version of the tune where we're just going to play the chords. And of course, seeing this notated always helps. Playing chords double stops, it's a great way to build flexibility in your left hand fingering where the fingers have to jump to in order to play a chord as well as the melody at the same time. These things are definitely worth spending time on. Let's have a look at that run of triplets. It sounds really nice, it's not that difficult, and what it is broken down are these notes. Played slowly in the tune, it sounds like this. get these is to start very very slowly. Take it as a phrase on its own that you're going to practice and then practice it mega slow, alternate picking down up down all the way to the end. And then slowly build the speed. pick. This is a one mil Dunlop flow, has a pointy end on it, which I feel definitely helps. But I'm holding it really lightly as I run fast through this section. Effectively letting the pick do all of the hard work. Here's the tune with simple ornamentation.
holding your fingers on the strings with the left hand for as long as possible is really important in mandolin because it's all about resonance and bringing that full tone out all of the time and avoiding very bitty staccato playing. I have a couple of backing tracks for this, the tune played in various ways with different variations and ornamentation at various speeds. So in effect you're getting multiple versions of this tune with all of the different ways to interpret it. If you want to grab PDFs for this tune and about 50 others, head on over to Patreon. Enda Skahal Banjo, the link is in the description.